Wild Apple is pleased to present this special remembrance of Sherry Blum, who died in the fall of 2003. We first met Sherry in 1996, when she was 26 years old, when she sent us six pieces of wrapping paper design. From that beginning, we worked closely with her over the next eight years and saw her artistic style mature and flourish. Today, the natural elegance of Sherry Blum is found in homes around the world. Since Sherry's passing, we have often reflected about her and her wonderful talent. We'd like to share these reflections and share with you elements of an interview she gave a year before her passing. I, I don't know that it's really sunk in yet <laughs> that, I, that I am an artist. It's just who I am. It's what I've always done. It's how I think. It's things that appeal to me. I, I couldn't be anything else. This studio is an old tenant farm building and what I like about it is that it's it's kind of run down and scrappy and it's not too, nothing too formal. It's just a place where I can come and get messy and load with a bunch of stuff. It has no real design style so you can bring to it you know whatever whatever inspires me. She was a very light-handed artist. She would paint lightly, and then sometimes she'd feel like, oh, that's even too much, and she'd sand it down, or she'd do different things to soften it and make it have that aged feeling. Because Sherry didn't like things that were glittery and new. She liked things that had a feel and a texture. And what would happen was she would paint an image, and then she would either crumple it up in a ball, or she'd paint something over it and sand it down, but whatever she did, it had a weathered, a textured, an aged feeling. And she could do that with any image. My early inspiration were children's book illustrators. My favorite one would be Lizbeth Zwerger. Her art is very spare and graceful. And she has a lot of earth tones and soft edges in her illustrations. I'm inspired by frescoes and decorative painting, more so than one particular artist. I worked very closely doing murals with an artist by the name of Liz Warnock, who I think I'm very inspired by. Sherry's artwork is certainly reminiscent of wet plaster fresco. People were painting imagery in churches on wet plaster that was meant to inspire and be there for centuries. It has an appeal. It's very gentle, soothing, and it looks as if it has weathered the centuries and has that integrity with it. Sherry's work was able to do the same thing because it had that feeling of it wasn't just painted in the studio an hour ago. It has been around, it has endured, it has been appreciated. And that's really what Sherry's work evoked. I think she always will be known as a, as a great floral painter, and I, her heart was there. She loved to paint the floral subject matter. Over the years, she did fruit, she did other subject matters as well. She did plenty of holiday work over the years for licensing. But I think her heart and soul was really with the floral work. I think. I would describe myself as being curious because I feel like I'm sort of a sponge visually and intellectually. I just can never get enough. I'm always seeking um, inspiration and more knowledge. It comes from a couple different places. Um, my mind is always working in my eyes. I'm always seeing things, a characteristic of something that I want to paint. And I'm constantly pulling clippings and pictures and taking pictures and snapping them and filing them away. And so that definitely comes from within me. There's just, I'll see something and I'll just really have the urge to paint it. The, 
this is one of the first pieces that I painted when I was heavily into doing the murals and the, and the faux painting and the textures on walls. And I was experimenting with translating that onto a canvas. And I thought, well, after I put down the texture, then what would I paint on it? And I knew I wanted it to be something very simple and elegant and spare and neutral. She wanted her works to be soft and gentle and appeal to men, to appeal to women, but to just have that timeless feel to it. And that was, I think, what appealed to people um, across the board. That it was a, it was a beautiful flower. The paper whites just seemed like, I, I just saw a picture of it and it was just very serene. There's a certain rhythm to it that appealed to me. And so that's what I did. And then I just really got, kind of got hooked on the flowers. Sherry kind of took the market by storm, and the, the early part of her success came from two pieces of, of work that she did. One was called Narcissus and the other called Orchid. Both lovely, fairly simple paintings, sort of impressionist paintings. When, when you look closely at them, it's the same as when you look at the work of great impressionists. When you're close to them, there's not a lot of paint, there's not a lot of brush stroke there, but when you step farther away, there's a great impression that's created from it. And in both pieces, there's a real glow, I think. I use primarily oil paints. Um, and I do a lot of experimentation in my work. Um, I haven't had a lot of formal uh, training in oil painting. So a lot of it is just trial and error and trying to paint like everybody else. <laughs> I'm not trying to do what, what it is that's happening. It's just what's happening because I don't really know what it is I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> and I, I paint very thinly. Um, I take off a lot. So it's a, pro it's a layering process of applying it and then removing it how, with any number of means. It can be you know, with rags or sandpaper or thinner or lye. Um, I, I'm always playing around with different things. But it's a process of adding and removing. And then it never ends up looking exactly like what I thought it was supposed to. And that used to frustrate me, but now I really love the serendipity of it. The wonderful thing about Sherry Blum is that she, she left behind so many paintings, a real living legacy. There's hundreds and hundreds of paintings that she did over, over her lifetime. So we have that, and that's the legacy that I think Wild Apple really wants to bring to people, is that Sherry was by no means finished. She had so much more to show and share with us, and we really, it's our job to get that out. We have quite a body of work now that we're developing for, for new prints and for new licensing opportunities from Sherry's legacy of, of work and we're very excited to, to dig into that body of work. It's our intention to continue to work with what she's given us to create collections that are very relevant and current and appropriate. For more information about the natural elegance of Sherry Blum, visit the Wild Apple website, wildapple.com, or call Wild Apple Graphics at 802-457-3003.